Ahead on early birds, Desmond Ritter leads the Falcons as they march on in to face the Saints. We'll dive deep in the decision. Plus, with two weeks until the college football semifinals, our resident Buckeye scouts out Georgia's opponent, and Miles breaks out the calculator to figure the Falcons' playoff odds. That and more ahead on early birds. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes Benz. Well, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. He's TJ. I'm Justin. We're back from the buy store. The Falcons, four games to go and a new quarterback debuting in New Orleans of Ooh, all places. Let's go. I'm looking forward to it. Lots good to Falcons. talk about. Always like talking quarterbacks yeah. uh, this early on a Saturday. Yeah. Desmond Ritter is the guy. He's going to be making his first career start tomorrow at 1 p.m. against the Saints right here on Fox 5 Shock. Let's set the stage, right? Preseason was a long time ago. I haven't seen this guy much at all. What do we expect out of the rookie? You know what? I'm expecting good things because of what his pedigree is and what he's done in the past. Obviously, college is different than the pros, but this guy is a proven winner. And everything I, I've heard from and talked to with people inside the organization says he is ready, he is confident, and he is ready for this particular spot. And I don't think going on the road to New Orleans will phase this kid. I think he'll be ready to go and uh, have a good day. I hope his cadence is nice and loud in the dome. Here is Desmond <laughs> Ritter, what he had to say earlier this week. You know, it's excitement. Um, this, is, this is my dream job was obviously to be a starting quarterback in the NFL. So, um, you know, I don't know what everyone's dream job was, but I'm sure if they got the call to go do their dream job, they'd be pretty excited. The relationship with the old lineman is great, but just even building it even more on the field. Um, and then, like I said, just with the receivers, you know, last time I threw to some of these guys might not have been um, in, in the previous weeks or whatever it may be, but actually back in camp. Um, so just getting back on track with them, you know, locking in with them and being on the same page. All right, as we continue on the opening drive, let's stick with quarterbacks. So fans shocked. They, some of them have been calling for this move for right. a while, making a change, right? We've been wondering on this show if it was going to happen. New Orleans, not an easy place to start. Falcons still in the playoff picture. So, DJ, why now? Was it just because you're coming off a bye? No, I think it's a little bit more than that. I think it was an opportunity for you to get better. Obviously, this team has been in a lot of ball games, And ultimately, we got to be honest, it came down to mistakes or things that have not gone your way from the quarterback spot. Mm -hmm. Now you have a guy who can rejuvenate it maybe and possibly do something different. And I think it helps the passing game. And why not do it with four games left and with a chance to get into the playoffs? Arthur Smith had this to say about the decision. The growth from Desmond that we've seen. He's been one play away all season. But feel very comfortable where he's at right now to be able to handle the game plan and operate at full capacity. Oh, sure. Well, we've been, uh, we've been throwing like on the, like during this little break. We've been throwing, catching balls from him so you know, get that chemistry going and stuff. So no, I think um, no, I think it should be really good. No, I'm excited for it. And as we wrap up the opening drive shock, let's talk a little bit about the Saints, shall we? They've mm -hmm. lost four of five, but always a potent offense, a lot of weapons. So how has the Saints attack maybe looked a little different with Andy Dalton running the show? Uh, I think there's been an emphasis on taking care of the football. Andy Dalton is a guy who doesn't turn it over too often, uh, but he's a guy who's a veteran. He's been around. He's played a lot of football, and he will come in and kind of give this offense and this team some stability and I think Andy Dalton is that kind of guy he's been playing well they just haven't been able to come out on the winning end of the things but Andy Dalton is the guy who's absolutely capable of playing big for the Saints all right we'll see how Desmond Ritter does against the Saints and if they can slow down Andy Dalton and New Orleans welcome on into early birds alongside DJ Shockley I'm Justin Felder we'll go back to quarterbacks one more time yeah, yeah. the other question is Marcus Mariota he's on injured reserve now got a knee injury uh, cleaned up that wasn't on the injury report for during the year just had a baby as well so we wish the best uh, to Marcus and, and his growing family but is there any kind of bad feeling that you don't have this experienced veteran backup available the rest of the year? Absolutely. It's something just doesn't smell right with this situation. So, and I feel like he should be there. Even with the injury, he still should be there to help the rookie through this, you know, kind of transition period. Him not being there just doesn't, doesn't really sit right with me. Might be more to the story than meets the Absolutely. eye. We only know what we know so far. No doubt. Something we'll keep an eye on. Well, Shock, let the good times roll on over to the film room. Go warm up the Telestrator. Let's we will go. see you in just a few. But first, it is one of the most coveted awards in football, the Walter Payton Man of the Year. And the Falcons nominee this season is offensive lineman Chris Lindstrom, very involved in the community, especially through the group Best Buddies. In fact, you can vote to help Chris earn some money for the charities he supports. The Falcons social media pages have more info if you want to vote for Chris. Lindstrom will also, of course, have a big hand in any success that the Falcons have down the stretch on offense. He sat down one-on-one -on -one this week with R. Kelly Price. 
Um, so obviously, Walter Payton Man of the Year. I mean, what was it like for you to get that news? Uh, surreal, really, really surreal. Um, it's an incredible honor and I'm just really grateful for it. And all the work that the community, uh, like our team has done in the community and our community relations staff is, they don't get enough credit for all that they do and they make it so easy. And I really think Mr. Blank is, I don't know if there's a better owner in the league in setting a standard of um, service in the community. And that's something I'm very appreciative that uh, and lucky to be a part of an organization like that. So coming off the bye, I'm sure the bye is just a good time for everyone to kind of get right and all that kind of stuff. But a big change for you guys on offense too, going from Marcus to Desmond. What mm -hmm. does that mean for you this week? Um, it, it, it's always hard, but it's one of those things where it's it's part of the business and you love Marcus and you know, it's in, but you're also really excited for Des, but you have to, it's the thing of just being a pro and um, we love those guys and so be our best on Sunday for them and uh, super excited to really finish the season out strong, taking it week by week and the Saints game is a huge rivalry. Uh, we know and understand that, so we're really attacking this week of practice. Talk about the challenges that New Orleans front obviously faces. You saw them week one, so you know a lot has happened since then for both teams, but what do you kind of see as far as that matchup? I mean, New Orleans notoriously has been one of the best fronts in the NFL, and those guys have earned that reputation, and uh, you know, Demario's a great player, Cam and, Mar and Davenport, you know, and really those guys inside are, are some of the best inside guys too. Um, and. You have a ton of respect for them as you know competitors, and you, can, you you go and watch them in the style of how they play, and you know they're big, strong, physical. But you really know um, it's one of those things where playing a divisional opponent, you've kind of built up these reps of playing against them, so you know what you're getting into and the challenges it presents. But it's it's a really exciting time here coming down the, the final stretch. It's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room, so cut the lights and let's get started. Now, since we've already been talking quarterback, let's stay on it in this particular segment where we're talking Desmond Ritter and what he can bring to this particular offense. Now, there's something interesting that he does, and this is back in the preseason. We went back to look at some of the stuff that he did well, and let's look at this particular play. One thing I want you to pay attention to is where it's at in the game. Fourth quarter, and it's fourth and nine. Watch the composure that he has. They're going to get a blitz that comes right up the middle. Now, this back does a great job of stepping in here and filling this gap, but watch how Desmond stands in here. He knows he's going to get pressure, but right now, nice job of picking up the blitz right in the middle. But look at his eyes. His eyes are still down the field. He's still trying to make sure he makes his play down the field, and he stands in his pocket. Actually, a really good pocket, but you're going to get a little pressure from the inside, and now you can see him try to escape. This is the part of the game that people like about this. Now he's got somebody in his face, and watch him let this thing go with a guy bearing down on him, but still has the composure to let this football go, and now he gets it to Bernhardt, who makes a touchdown. Let's watch it from the backside as well, where he makes this play here, and you're gonna see a nice job of coming around the edge here and giving his guy a chance at the end of this play. Now, with a lot of people in his face, it's kind of hard to get this going. But now, watch his eyes. His eyes are still downfield with this guy barreling down on him, and he's trying to keep him from going outside. So he knows he has to pull up, and now you let it go. And ultimately, this is a big time throw and big time catch. And we're hoping this continues, Justin, in the Big Easy with Desmond Ritter making plays like this when it matters the most, especially at the end of a ball game. Yeah, we saw the late game heroics in the preseason. Maybe some more of that in the future. Shock, thanks so much. More to come on Early Birds. We are two weeks away from the college football semifinals. The okay. biggest Buckeye fan we know is here to give us a scouting report on Georgia's opponent. Plus. So everybody does it differently, but the one popular one is like the one big hop. Young Wei Koo has a few tricks up his sleeve when it comes to onside kicks. He explains his technique next in Going Deep. Hey Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Early Birds is presented by Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And brought to you by Georgia Lottery, today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. 
BB&T and SunTrust are now truest. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felder. Welcome back into Early Birds, joined by former Falcons receiver Michael Jenkins. And this was bound to happen, wasn't it? Right, yes, it was. Right when you <laughs> signed up for this gig, we knew it. Georgia and Ohio State would meet at some point. They're in the semifinals. So let me ask you first, how are your, uh, your Georgia Bulldog friends doing with this with you? Uh, they're crushing me. It's all Georgia <laughs> fans down here. But uh, I'm holding my own. I know my, my Georgia peeps will... They might be a little salty at the end of this one. Okay, well, yeah. we'll see We'll see what you're calling down the line. Let's talk about this matchup coming up in the Peach Bowl in the semifinals, and let's talk about your Buckeyes taking on Georgia with a spot in the national title game on the line. One loss this year. It came against Michigan. Don't want to bring that up. Yeah. Tell us about this team. I mean, this is a team led by C.J. Stroud, obviously a Heisman finalist, who's you know one of the best quarterbacks in the nation's high-powered offense that can get the ball down the field, great running backs, and a defense that – will be the deciding factor in this game, mm. see if we can stop that Georgia offense. Yeah, it could be two real high-powered offense. Could be a lot of points New Year's Eve. I got a chance this past week to go up to Columbus, Ohio, talk to Buckeyes head coach Ryan Day. Well, first off, uh, the defending national champs um, undefeated this year and, and uh, playing a high level of football. Uh, veteran quarterback, um, really good offense, defense, special teams, play hard. You know, going out to Atlanta in their backyard, so a uh, big challenge. When we, were, when we were in Columbus, everywhere I went into, I just said, Michael Jenkins, we know him, and it was just doors are opening. You're a legend. Uh, you know, I did my thing when I was up there. Hey, it, it, was, it was cool to see. It was good to be there, and you heard it from Coach Ryan Day, the atmosphere here in Atlanta. What kind of challenge is that going to be? There are going to be Buckeyes fans. We know that from bowl officials. Definitely. But how big a challenge will that be for your Buckeyes for probably a pro UGA crowd? I mean, it's, it's a huge advantage, obviously, for Georgia coming right down the road to the stadium. So. Buckeye fans do travel mm -hmm. well, so some, some are saying 70-30 Georgia with the fans in the crowd, but I think it'll be closer to 50-50. Okay. I think you'll be surprised how many fans will be in the game on our side. Yeah, Peach Bowl officials told us Ohio State fans, they're buying up tickets, mm -hmm. but Georgia players, they're excited to be back in the Benz, a place they know real well. Atlanta is home to so much of college football, uh, especially when you've been part of the SEC. So it makes for an awesome opportunity. Um, our players are excited for the opportunity to play in a CFP semifinal um, against an opponent that uh, we all have immense respect for. You know, Ohio State is one of the premier teams in the country. Uh, Coach Day has done a fabulous job with his team in terms of recruiting uh, across the country, putting out NFL talent. So Georgia and Ohio State, that's the late game in the semifinals on New Year's Eve. Earlier than that, let's talk a little bit about the other semifinal, Michigan and TCU. Won't make you say nice things about Michigan <laughs> unless you want to. What do you see out of that matchup between uh, another Big Ten team and a surprise team in TCU? I actually really like this matchup mm -hmm. because Michigan obviously got embarrassed last time they were in the college football playoff. TCU has always felt like they were that odd team out that they could never get in. So they're going to be motivated to play, and it's going to be a, a, a really good matchup between these two teams, knowing that one of them gets to play in the national championship. Yeah, TCU maybe the underdog factor uh, in their mind as well. Also tell you about our Zaxby's indescribably good game of the week. The Fenway Bowl today, Cincinnati and Louisville in Boston. Here's the weird thing, Jank. Cincinnati just hired Scott Satterfield to be their new coach. To take that job, he left Louisville. That's got to be a weird feeling in this bowl game. It definitely has to be a weird feeling. I mean, you just coached those guys all season. <laughs> Going, he's got the scouting report on him. Uh, that is for sure. Also got the Celebration Bowl today at the Benz Jackson State, North Carolina Central. And Shock, you got anything to, uh, to say to Mike? Absolutely. Jake knows it's going to be 70-30 <laughs> in the Benz. No he don't want to admit it. Dogs all day, man. So uh, looking forward to it, though. All right, it's one of the toughest things to do in football. Recover an onside kick that a team knows is coming. Recent rule changes made it even harder. It hasn't happened this year, but Young Wei Koo has been one of the best at it in recent seasons. Here's Young Wei with the secrets of a good onside kick, and this week's going deep. So everybody does it differently, but the one popular one is like the one big hop where like you kick it really hard into the ground and then it bounces up really high. That one you just tee it up straight up and then you just kick it really hard down this way. So then it bounces off the ground. So you're literally trying to kick the, almost the point of the ball? Yeah, almost top of the ball right here. And you want to kick this into the ground, like jam it as hard as you can so it pops up. Do you have like a lot of tools in your tool bag, tricks in your arsenal? Again, we're not giving away things, but do you have like a lot of different different, you know, tools in the tool bag, so to speak? Yeah, I mean, you see different guys doing different onside kicks, and you try to practice that, and it's like, okay, I can do that. Try to get creative, but at the end of the day, you know, you just got to get to 10 yards and let the guys get the ball. How satisfying is that when you get either that perfect hop or it goes just, because it's a little unpredictable, right. right? How satisfying is that when it works? Um, for me, 
on an onside kick is make sure it goes 10 yards because if it goes nine yards, then I'm screwing everybody. So I'm just trying to make sure it goes 10 yards. That's the only thing I'm thinking about. Might they need an onside kick this week? We shall see four weeks to go for the Falcons. Still in the playoff picture, but won't be easy. Miles takes a look at the odds later on Early Birds. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz, on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Well, it's one of those injuries that athletes say you know immediately what it is right when it happens. The dreaded Achilles injury, which can sideline NFL players a whole season, and that's the focus of this week's Emory Road to Recovery. Achilles tendon injuries are common, unfortunately, um, and you know, if you've probably heard before that you're going to miss most of the season or if not the entire season, and a lot of times they're surgical. So an Achilles tendon injury, when it ruptures, the Achilles tendon is a complex of the calf muscles that are on the back side of the leg that then come down and create a large thick tendon that then attaches to the back of the heel bone, which is right here called the calcaneus. And basically the Achilles tendon is, you know, the, the attachment site that allows your muscles to, you know, forcefully push up, jump, run, run, sprint. And so they're very powerful, strong muscles, but there's a lot of stress that gets placed through the Achilles tendon at the attachment site here of the calcaneus. And so what happens with an Achilles tendon rupture is essentially about six centimeters usually above the heel, the tendon will just tear. And when it tears, it separates. And so that separation creates a gap between the tendon and it doesn't allow the muscle to connect to the bone essentially. So you can't forcefully push up, run, jump, sprint. So you really don't have the ability to be an athlete, especially an NFL athlete, without a normal Achilles tendon attaching to your heel bone. So an Achilles tendon rupture then requires surgery where we will sew the tendon back, back together so that it heals, allowing that muscle function and that ankle function and that power and the sprinting and jumping and everything else to then kind of restore itself back to the way it was um, as a high level athlete. All right, thanks, Doc. The Falcons are still alive for the playoffs in a down year for the NFC South. Miles is here to take a look at their chances. That's coming up next on Early Birds. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. All right, Shaq, time for our play of the day presented by Lucra, the new friendly competition app. Here's the question. In Desmond Ritter's first start, will he have more rushing or passing touchdowns? One word, Justin. Rushing. You see the rushing. Maybe he hooks up with Drake London a little yeah. bit. Could be through the air. If you want to compete head-to-head -head with your friends, just scan the QR code on your screen. Well, the Falcons at 5-8 and eight, somehow still, still on, alive. somehow still alive in the NFC South. So you're saying there's a chance we brought in our Miles Garrett to break down the odds. Guys, hard to believe there's only four regular season games left for these Atlanta Falcons, and believe it or not, they are still in the playoff hunt. You can credit that to a poor NFC South, but let's see what the odds are if the Falcons win or lose their next four games. We'll start with the game tomorrow at the Superdome against the Saints. If they win that game, they're already starting off hot. They get the first win, they need to win three more. So let's give them another win against the Baltimore Ravens, a team that's struggling at quarterback. Lamar Jackson has had his injuries. Tyler Huntley could get the start. That's a favorable matchup for Atlanta. Their next opponent, another team coincidentally, that's having issues at quarterback. Let's say they win that game against the Arizona Cardinals. Colt McCoy at quarterback, Kyler Murray down with an ACL. That's three games. You win your fourth game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and you are sitting pretty. That's an 87% possibility of making the playoffs. That's according to 538, the website. But after that, things get a little hairy. Even if the Falcons win three of their next four games, the likelihood that they make the playoffs, just 26%. They're obviously gonna need some help throughout the division, but guys, given how the season's gone, that's not completely unlikely. So just go undefeated, says Miles. Sounds like easy that. enough. Quick matchup to watch, Falcons and Saints. Chris Olave, AJ Terrell. That's yeah. going to be a good one. Like Olave's been real good as a rookie. All yeah. right, for DJ Shockley, I'm Justin Felder. Thanks for joining us here on Early Birds, Falcons and Saints tomorrow. See you next weekend.